I'm going to cover education and evaluation as a part of Train the Trainer Delivery and Evaluation course at the Tala Training Centre for the DDL ETV. What we're going to do now is we're going to cover the ed education evaluation piece as it relates to the course, the assignments, but also for when you work on the job. And I will differentiate between the two, so I will let you know which is which. Now, from the course perspective, we're covering education evaluation at a fairly rudimentary level. Enough for us to understand what education evaluation is and be able to perform education evaluation at at least two of the four uh, Kirkpatrick levels. Well, actually two of the five, because I include return on investment as well. But the important thing is to remember that from Kirkpatrick's level one reaction, it's generally a feedback form. So the learner's assessment of the trainer, the training environment, and the course and content. And then there is level two, which is learning, which is generally an, an assessment either by the trainer or the learners or by an external entity. So for, in our case, QQI are providing that through the three assignments, the project brief, the skills demonstration, and the learner record. Then we have outsider class on the job, where you show that you have, so level three behavior, where you have the relevant uh, knowledge and skills um, and show those this change in behavior when you're on the job. And that generally is assessed by 360 degree feedback, uh, performance appraisals, uh, peer reviews, self-reflection and so on. And then later on, uh, after weeks, months, maybe longer, there has to be an assessment on the business benefits of this training intervention in terms of return of expectations, which is level four results, and level five, which is more geared towards financial aspects. Did this pay off financially? Did we get a return on investment or return on value? So, we've done the course, or you have, in other words, You've provided the research, you've um, done the reflection, you've designed your training interventions or your skills demonstration, your project brief, and you've delivered your skills demonstration. So we're done, we're dusted, you can go home, pick up a certificate. Well, no, we need one more piece, which is really important. We need to be able to prove that our training intervention was successful, not only in terms of happy learners and the fact that the, the knowledge and skills are there, but that as learners we're successful when we're on the job and providing value to the business. So we need to evaluate. Evaluation is key. And this course is train the trainer, delivery and evaluation. So why do we evaluate? Well, there are three main reasons. One is we want to make sure we can improve the training intervention over time. So every time we run our training intervention, we should be able to find ways in which we can improve it for the next set of learners. The second one is we want to make sure that we maximize the learner's increase in knowledge, the learner's improvement in skills, and the learner's enhancement of attitude so that you can perform well or learners can perform well when they're on the job. And number three then is be able to prove that the training intervention led to change behaviors on the job that led to business benefits in, in the long term or fairly fairly long term so we're talking weeks months maybe a year okay what we're going to cover today uh, we're going to cover formative versus summative assessments now formative assessments as we know is um, are provided during the training intervention so as a trainer assess the learner skills continuously to make sure that going from the when you first enter the class, so the prerequisites are here, and to move the dial successively so that you have an increase in knowledge, improvement in skills, and enhancement of attitude. So make sure you learn as you go along. Now the summative assessment is generally performed at the end of a training intervention. So we're talking about feedback forms, which would be level one, Kirkpatrick's level one reaction. We're talking tests, assignments, which would be Kirkpatrick's level two, learning and uh, we're talking on the job assessments which would be Kirkpatrick's level three behavior and then later on results which is level four and uh, five which is return of investment return of value when we look at the business benefits of the course. We're going to have a look at the Kirkpatrick's five levels of education evaluation and the reason I say five and not four is that Don Kirkpatrick when he created the initial model accepted that he had a strong academic background but not much experience when it came to the corporate world. So therefore, 
return expectations, you could say, is a fairly broad set of business metrics, where the fifth level, added by Phillips later on, and Don Kirkpatrick agreed that was a good idea, uh, which is, is more <coughs> specifically aimed at the financial aspect, so the return on investment and return on value. Then we're going to have a look at the how Kirkpatrick's model and Paddy plus M evaluation and maintenance stage, how they map together. Since we've been covering Addy, and I'm going to talk about Paddy plus M in, in a second. Then we're going to look at it from a timeline perspective. So in other words, uh, the education evaluation in real life, looking at training intervention, end of training intervention, on the job, and then the results business aspect of things. Now, we're not going to, I'm not going to go through the exercises, I'm just going to mention at a high level uh, for your benefit. And then we're going to have a look at some aspects that are good for when we're on the job. Providing a summary and then Q&A. So I'm going to talk to this in a later presentation, but at the moment I'm just mentioning Paddy plus M because and the reason for doing this is that the US Navy, which is the single largest and longest user of the Addy model, recognized that there were some challenges to that model and decided that they, it needed to be improved. So they created the Paddy plus M model in 1985, adding P for plan and M for maintenance. So planning is basically making sure that the training intervention is done within time, under budget and providing relevant quality. But at this stage, we actually, actually provide a, a business case to the business and say, we need to do this training intervention and it is going to provide us with the following benefits. Now we do what's known as a cost benefit analysis. In other words, making sure that the investment is, is well worth uh, making. During the online stage, we do the training needs analysis. We understand what the aim of the training intervention is, as well as the expected increase in knowledge, improvement in skills, and enhancement of attitudes. And also, what the prerequisite level is of the same. So, you know, where do we start in terms of knowledge, skills, and attitude? That then goes into design, where we define our plan learning outcomes based upon the, um, the analysis stage where the instructional goals, where we decide this is the level that the learners should be at the end of the training intervention in terms of knowledge, skills, and attitude. What we also do here is we design instructional strategies and also the, the testing strategies. So for example, the formative assessment that is provided during the implement stage where the trainer evaluates the learners in a, in a continuous fashion through question and answer sessions, quizzes, group discussions, and the like. The evaluate stage, though, at the end of the training intervention, we do the summative assessment. Uh, and it's a good idea here already to have a good idea of what those summative assessments should be. In terms of feedback forms, level one, Kirkpatrick, reaction, uh, the test or assignments that QQI have provided in this case, in terms of level two, uh, Kirkpatrick's uh, learning, and Kirkpatrick's level three uh, on the job would be later on, after the training intervention, possibly during the maintenance phase, but also here where we discuss return on investment and return of value. So Kirkpatrick's level four results and level five return on investment, return of value. So that's the only reason why I'm covering this. So we can understand that we should think about evaluation already at the beginning and not as an afterthought at the end of the training intervention. But already here, so thinking about how we are going to provide a formative assessment, in other words, assessment during the training intervention, but also summative assessment, in other words, at the end of the training intervention, and also later on. Now, Paddy Rizam evaluate. So looking at, first of all, the difference between the formative and summative assessment. We've covered that already. The formative assessment is the trainer's evaluation, continuous evaluation of the learners during the training intervention in class to see that there's a continuous increase in knowledge, skills, and improvement in attitude over time, linked to knowledge, skills, attitude, but linked to the planned learning outcomes of the course. That's important. The summative is at the very end, where we say that, okay, while the formal assessments uh, test things this bit by bit by bit, topic by topic by topic, uh, so for something, every, every class we have a, a form of formative assessments in terms of the Q&As and the group discussions that, that learners have. At the very end of it, though, we need to verify that the whole training intervention, uh, that the, the knowledge gained through that whole training intervention um, is what it should be in terms of knowledge, skills, and attitude through assignments or tests at the very end. The summative also 
some of the assessment also looks at what happens when you're on the job. So when you've left the class, you're on the job, you work for a couple of weeks, a couple of months to see that you have the relevant um, increase or the, no, rather the knowledge you have and the skills you have are being applied when you're on the job and then in the longer term are providing the relevant business benefits in terms of results, return of investment and return of value. So I always cover this to some degree. So the blue background is formative and the red background is summative. So the formative is evaluation during the learning process, monitoring of the learning process from a trainer's perspective. The purpose is to improve students' learning. So increase in knowledge, skills and attitude. And it usually contain or, or includes limited areas and is a continuous process. So every, um, yeah, so in our case for the, for the train the trainer course, so every evening there are a number of these formative assessments being performed to make sure that there's an increase in, in, in abilities. Now the summative assessment is provided after the course completion and usually a grade is assigned. So in the case of QQI, based upon your assignments, you will receive a grade of distinction or merit or pass, for example. And the purpose is to evaluate your achievements or your, your learnings. And it contains, it covers the full breadth of the, of the course and is seen as a, a product. Moving on. So we're looking at Kirkpatrick's five levels of education evaluation. Now, most people when they start with Kirkpatrick talk about the four levels. And the reason I talk about the fifth level is that from a business perspective, a corporate perspective, the, uh, the business approvals are good, but what they're really looking for is the financial return, the financial gain, financial improvement, which is why ROI is a subset of the results, can be seen as a subset of results, but it's very important to highlight that. So we have five levels. Reaction, which is level one. Learning, which is level two. Behavior, which is level three. Results, which is level four. And return investment, which is level five. So at this level, the reaction, level one, we are asking ourselves, is this good training? This is where you, as learners, evaluate me as a trainer, as an example. Uh, has the course given you, provided you with the relevant uh, results? Um, have, you, have we covered all the planned learning outcomes? Do you think you'll be successful on the job? Have I been able to provide you with uh, the relevant support and knowledge during the training dimension? But also things like the learning environment. Uh, was is Tata Training Centre a good place uh, to learn? Were the classrooms good? Uh, the pieces were working? The cafeteria served nice coffee and tea? Things like that. But also the course and content. The, in other words, the course content and structure. Was there a good logical flow of the course? And was the content relevant to you for you to apply for when you're on the job? And generally that is provided through feedback forms that you respond to uh, and that I provide. Learning is, Kirkpatrick level two, learning, is there improvement in knowledge, skills and attitude? And generally that is handled by an external examiner. In this case, QQI examiner is going to review your project brief, your skills demonstration and your learner record. So that's generally handled by someone who is objective, who is external. Because if I was to evaluate, if I was the only person to evaluate, uh, evaluate you, chances are I'd be fairly subjective in your favour which may not be a bad thing, but for the sake of objectivity, because obviously this is a certificate um, or training covered by the Open College, various training centers and, and so on, and various education and training boards, it's important to, to provide partiality and objectivity. And that's generally through a test, or in this case, or in your case, the three assignments, the project brief, the skills demonstration, and the learner record. Now, when we're on the job, we have Kirkpatrick level three behavior. That is, has this training intervention provided you with the adequate, the behavioral change for you to be successful on the job? There, you will be assessed by, let's say, uh, your peers through 360 degree feedback. Your feedback forms may be from your, your clients or net promoter scores to show that you've improved over time. Or your manager uh, uh, evaluates you as part of a performance appraisal. But also, and I think this is probably most important, your own personal self-reflection. So what went well, what didn't go so well, what can I be improved, what will I use uh, in future? Now this obviously has to be done over a longer period of time because it takes a while to see the results of it. Which means that when we get to Kirkpatrick level four results, so has there been a measurable impact on business outcomes? And this is where a manager sees, has your 
change of behavior, your improved knowledge, skills, and attitude actually improve the business outcomes. So, for example, uh, increased sales, uh, more customer contacts, uh, these kind of things. But also, generally, maybe happier customers. The fact that you're more confident and capable as, for example, a trainer will generally lead to happier customers. But also, and this is really important, a lot of companies will always ask, what's, what's in it for me? What's, uh, show me the money. Where is the, best, where is the benefit, the financial benefit of this training intervention? So what you will find is when companies send people off to courses, not only do they want to make sure that they are happy with the course and they've learned a lot, but that they're able to apply these skills on the job and that it provides the company with a return on investment. In other words, uh, increased sales, um, a larger number of, uh, of, well, not just increase in sales, but also bigger deals, for example. Or in the case of trainers, that uh, you're a, you're a, are, are, have such a good reputation as a trainer based upon the course you've attended because of the behaviors you're showing as a trainer that uh, a lot more students want to um, pay you for your, your training interventions or the company's training interventions that you work for. So this is, this is very important, which is why even if we can, pay, we can include return investments, return of value as part of the results, it's actually important to, to break it out because, like I said, Don Kirkpatrick had originally not considered ROI or ROV because of his strong academic background and of his uh, not having, a, in his mind, a strong enough understanding of the corporate world. Okay? So five levels, reaction, learning, that's end of course, feedback forms, tests or assignments, behaviors on the job, showing we have the, the right uh, behavior, results in ROI are the business benefits. Now, what we want to do next is have a look at how the Paddy plus M model and maps to Kirkpatrick's five levels of education evaluation. So level one, reaction. This is where we assess learners' reaction to the training intervention. For example, uh, feedback forms. And this is where you provide as learners, or if we provide feedback to the trainer in terms of the, the value of the course, are these skills applicable when on the job, um, the training environment, and, and also uh, things like uh, the course structure and content. Now this maps to ADI and Paddy plus M model summative assessment level one perception. Two, learning, Paddy level two learning. That assesses the learners actually learned through assignments and tests, pre and post. Now what do I mean by, well, so the assignments are, in the case of QQI, your project brief, your skills demonstration and your learner record. That's how the QQI are going to assess your increase in knowledge, your improvement in skills and your enhanced attitude. So in other words, confidence and comfort. The tests pre and post. Ideally, we want to make sure that we can provide a relevant metric in terms of these, this is the level you were at before the training intervention. Ideally through a pre-course assessment, a test, to show these, this is the level of knowledge you have, the level of skills you have, and your, your attitude. And then at the end, provide a similar test to see, okay, so we can measure the increase in knowledge, the improvement in skills, and the enhancement of the attitude, in other words, the, your attitude, in terms of confidence and comfort in working as a trainer. Now this maps to ADI and Paddy plus M model, summative assessment level two, learning. Level three, Kirkpatty level three behavior. This is where we assess behavioral changes, for example, via on-the-job appraisals. So 360 degree feedback from your peers, your manager has a performance review with you, your own self-reflection, which is very, very important, but also clients or customers appraisal of, of your improved skills on the job. Now this matches ADI and Paddy Percent model, summative assessment level three performance. So these two are after the training intervention, at the end of the training intervention. This is after when you're on the job. Now results is assesses organizational benefits in terms of return of expectations. Again, Don Kirkpatrick made it clear that he had a strong academic background, but did not have a strong uh, corporate background, which is why he left it at, at this level. However, Phillips added five value. In other words, return of investment, return of value. So these two generally, though, uh, are best measured during the maintenance. So in ADI, we've added plus M, or rather the US Navy have added the plus M for maintenance, where we provide a return investment analysis and a return value analysis. Now this is done 
fairly uh, late in the uh, training dimension because we have the training dimension uh, here, we have the assessment end of training dimension, we have the on-the-job assessment over a period of time, so weeks, months and so on, and then finally we have the results and the value later on. Now this table is just another way to show what I had in the previous slide, but it may, it's, I'm trying to get to this teachable moment. So we have Kirkpatrick, we have Paddy Bazem evaluation and maintenance, we have when it's performed and then who assesses who. So we have reaction, that is Paddy's uh, evaluation, summative assessment perception, when, end of course, so end of the training intervention, who assesses whom, the learner assesses the trainer through feedback forms. Kirkpatrick level 2 learning, we have summative assessment learning as part of the Paddy uh, evaluation, when, end of course, and the examiner assesses the learner through tests or assignments, can also be the trainer. So when you did your skills demonstration, you provided two things. One, a feedback form as part of reaction, and two, a test as part of learning to make sure that your learners had uh, were successful in achieving your planned learning outcomes. Now then we have level Kirkpatrick level three, which is behavior on the job. That maps to the Paddy plus M, so the evaluation stage, summative assessment performance. That's provided on the job. So in other words, after the training intervention, when you're on the job, over a period of time. So manager, peers and clients assess the learner or the employee, but also very important that you apply self-reflection. So in other words, you think about what's gone well, what hasn't gone so well, what can be improved, both in terms of you as a trainer, or, but also the environment, but also the course structure and content. And then results and value are, are basically matched to uh, the maintenance stage of Paddy plus M, so the maintenance value, which is done a, while, a certain time after you've had, uh, been on the job and proven that the, uh, you have the relevant skills, the right change of behavior, and they in turn then lead to uh, business improvements. And that's basically the business assessing Things like, well, return on expectations, but also return on value and return of investment, so the financial aspects of it. Um, and what we're going to do now is looking at education evaluation in real life. Sorry, I'm just going to lock open my door because it's getting a bit warm in here. It's 32 degrees in here, so... <laughs> now, what we covered so far is important for our uh, other, for the course, but also for when we're on the job. Now, this is also important for the course. So what I look at is education evaluation in real life over time. So timeline. First of all, what we have is the training intervention. During the training intervention, you or me as the trainer evaluates you as learners or you evaluate your learners through what we call a formative assessment, which is a continuous assessment of increase in knowledge, improvement of skills, and enhancement of attitude. Ideally, we want to see a gradual increase in, in knowledge, skills, and attitude linked to the planned learning outcomes of the course. So the dial going from this is where you started and increasing over time. Then we go to the end of training intervention. So we've provided the training intervention. The course could be instructor-led class, a facilitator-led class, can be e-learning, can be a blended, can be whatever. Then we look at the end of training intervention. This is where the trainer is being evaluated by the learners in terms of the feedback forms. So that's summative assessment, perception, so that's ADDI, linked to Kirkpatrick level one reaction. That's the feedback form. But also, the trainer may also provide a test. So during your skills demonstration, you were evaluated by your learners, the feedback form, the summative assessment perception, le Kirkpatrick level one reaction, but also you provided the test of your learners. Uh, that is um, ADDI or PADI plus M level two learning, Kirkpatrick level two learning assessment test. Okay. Now, in a lot of cases, for example, with QQI, I don't provide you with a test. That I do not provide the examination. What I do is provide you with a formative assessment, you provide me with a feedback form, and then QQI will provide you with, with exam well, actually, the QQI examiner will see how well you do on your assignments. So that's the project brief, the skills demonstration, and the learner record. And that is summative assessment, 
uh, ADI evaluation learning linked to Kirkpatrick level 2 learning and that will result in a grade. Now, moving on. So next we have on the job. On the job is when you spend a couple of weeks and months that you are being uh, continuously evaluated, ideally, by a manager, by peers, and potentially by a client, but also apply self-reflection. So this is summative assessment. So from the ADI perspective, it's called performance. Uh, from Kirkpatrick, it's Kirkpatrick level three behavior. And generally through performance reviews, feedback forms, 360 degree feedback, and self-reflection. Now, as trainers, can we provide input and support both the employees and the management in providing feedback? Yes, we can. We can, because ideally when we're providing training, we're actually providing people the ability to change the way to do things, to do things better, to do things faster, to do things more efficiently. <clears throat> and the idea then is that they ideally should be measured on those new aspects that they've been acquired as part of the training intervention. So we can actually aid the management and as well as 360 degree feedbacks, we can actually suggest these are some of the aspects that you could look at that the, your uh, the employer has improved over time. So we can, we can actually help them with that. Now, from my perspective as a facilitator or trainer for uh, the QQI, uh, train the trainer delivery and evaluation I won't have the same impact that you can have when on the job because once the class is done it's thank you bye bye I will however provide you with a feedback form later on on the job after a couple of months just to see how you view the skills that you acquire as part of the training intervention how useful they are and how you've been able to put them to work or not as, as the case may be but you will, as a trainer, most likely be employed by a training organization or by a company where you provide continuous training and you have this relationship with your learners, your, your peers, but also with the management. So it's easy for you to provide that, in, that input. Now, what we also do is the next stage is results and value. So I've grouped us together. That's the business benefit, the business aspect of thing. Ideally, when we've all applied or you know, it, uh, attended the training intervention, we have an increase in knowledge, improvement in skills, and enhancement of attitude, you know, confident and comfortable in what we're doing. That should, when we're on the job, lead to business improvements. That should be measurable then by the business in terms of return expectations and return of value or, or return on investment, the financial aspect. Even here, we can, as trainers, provide feedback or input. And that's one of the things that's really, really important. Um, ideally, though, we should have had a conversation early on during the training intervention, already during the plan stage, to ask the business, how do you measure return investment? How do you measure return of value? Especially important if your training intervention is strategic to the business. So then you already know how to provide the relevant measurement and the input to, to the management team. Um, let's move on. So, I've already mentioned that Kirkpatrick's fifth level of education evaluation, providing return on investment, return on value, is a subset, essentially, of Kirkpatrick's level four, which is results, the return on expectations. However, a lot of companies are extremely uh, financially aware and want to see financial benefit as a part of the training intervention that you're providing. So we're talking about the return on investment, return on value. And here are some examples of return on investment calculations that we can perform at a high level just to get a good feel for did our training intervention provide uh, financial value. And I provided the link then to the place that we can read about this in greater detail. However, during the plan stage of the PADI plus M model, remember ADI, we add plan at the beginning and plus M at the end for maintenance, the US Navy did in 1985, uh, to alleviate some of the weaknesses of the original ADI model. During the plan stage, we perform a business case. We write a business case to, to prove to the business that we're going to be successful uh, or uh, that we're going to provide value. And we provide or we run a cost versus benefit analysis. In other words, where we see the cost of this training intervention and uh, perhaps loss of job because people aren't, aren't working when they're in the, attending the training 
uh, will be offset by the, the benefits of providing this, this training intervention. In other words, the new, the increased in knowledge, the improved in skills, and the, the, the confidence and, and the comfort we have in doing what we need to do on the job, in other words, attitude, will lead to these following benefits. So it's very important to link what we did during the plan business case cost benefit uh, versus uh, cost versus benefits analysis and the ROI calculation we do at the end okay however this isn't always relevant because if we're doing a course that is not strategically important we don't really need to do a an in-depth return on investment it is good to say though to be able to link at least to level level three capacity level three behavior that because of this training intervention not only do we have happy, uh, happy learners in terms of the feedback form, level one reaction, and not only did they acquire the relevant knowledge, skills, and attitude, level two uh, learner, but that they actually are more successful on the job, so at least at that level. So I can uh, for, take, for example, Microsoft Office skills are important, but they may not be strategically important to the business that you're in, unless your team are, uh, are a bunch of technical writers who sell their technical writing skills, to other companies, then that would potentially be strategic, of strategic importance. <coughs> so we had an exercise analyzing the summaries of the following summative assessments, feedback forms and assessments tests. So the idea here is not to do a full-blown education evaluation. The idea here is to understand at a high level how to perform education evaluation of the and draw relevant conclusions of the feedback forms and the tests that you provided to your learners during your skills demonstration because you can apply that knowledge and later on so again we're keeping it at that level relevant to the training intervention this training intervention this course and not going into an in-depth education evaluation analysis that's important to differentiate between the two so what we did was we had um, summaries then of a training intervention where the overall assessment is poor, course content structure was neutral to poor, application value neutral, education environment neutral, additional comments none. Now one of the things here, now this feedback form is very simple, very easy to, for people to fill out. However, if everybody says everything is good but doesn't provide any comments, it's very difficult to understand exactly what it was they thought was good. So how do I know what components of my course I should continue with? Now, I will probably as a trainer have a fairly good idea of what to do and what's good, but it's very important to think about that. Uh, likewise, if people really, you know, really unhappy about the course of the training intervention, I need to know why. If they just fill out a, a, a happy, sad, or whatever face without providing comments, then I don't, I may, I may not really know what was bad, what can I improve, what do I need to change, what may I, need, may I have to remove and add something else instead. But anyway, in this case, people aren't happy. And looking at the results, uh, on average, people got three out of seven right uh, at the test. And it seems that most people did quite well or were able to respond or answer the first three questions correctly, but dropped down to the end. Now this follows the course. Of so one could potentially draw the conclusion that people were excited going into the course, good attitude, motivated, but as the course progressed, they got more and more disillusioned and bored, and at the end, just didn't feel motivated enough to, to remain engaged. That's a potential outcome or conclusion we could draw. The second one then is, again, overall assessment though, the good, course common structure, good, application and value, in other words, the way we can apply the knowledge, good, educator, they're happy with the trainer, and good course, valuable knowledge and skills. So this gives us a little more information. And we can see that on average, people got six out of seven right on the test. So here we could potentially draw the conclusion that yes, the learners arrived motivated, felt good about the course all the way through, they felt engaged all the way through the course and did well. They learned the skills and felt the skills were relevant to the job and the assessment proves that. Now again, this is a very simple level, so we're not looking at a full-blown educa education evaluation. That is not the goal of this course. This is course is aimed at giving you the foundations, the, the basic knowledge that you need to provide a re an irrelevant assessment of your own. Now, overall assessment, good. Course content and structure, good. A application value, excellent. In other words, the, the knowledge and the skills they're provided are going to be really good for the job. Educate environment, not too happy with the, the trainer. Additional comments, too long course, was boring, and the trainer is too chatty. And the results show that, yeah, okay, so again, four out of seven 
uh, the average score was four correct out of seven. We can see that at relevant at the beginning of the course, people were able, well, were motivated, were interested because the, the scores reflect that. And again, maybe the course is too long. Uh, and maybe the trainer needs to think about the fact uh, of his or her uh, approach to training. But again, keeping at a very simple level that we can apply for our assignments. In other words, for the, the project brief when we, for question number five and six. And then, but I understand though that there's a lot more to education evaluation than this, okay? Now, this is an important question. How do you, as a trainer, evaluate your client relevant to Kirkpatrick's Levels 3 behavior and 4 results? In other words, you've provided the training intervention, the course has gone well, level 1, the reaction, the feedback form said they were good, they were happy, uh, the tests that they've done, level 2, the learning, have proved to be good, they're very happy, but how can you aid your client in performing the relevant assessments at level three, in other words, uh, compact level three behavior, so on the job performance, and also level four results, you know, over time, the business benefits or business improvement that uh, this training intervention has, has required or has uh, provided. Now, I've already mentioned some of these uh, during this presentation, but I want you to think about this and think about how you will, will go about doing this, helping your client. Now, this is for on the job. So you can sit back, relax. We're, we're, I'm not covering stuff that is relevant or directly relevant to this course or to the assignments. This is for on the job so that when you, you can add this to your virtual toolbox, essentially. So the, um, what happened is, Don Kirkpatrick unfortunately passed away in 2014. But for a number of decades, his eldest son, James, called Jim, and his wife, Wendy, have taken the Carpatic model. And in 2016, they wrote a book, after decades of experience, calling uh, the, the model, the new model, the New World Carpatic model. And what they've also done, and what I've done, is I've taken that New World Carpatic model, where they have responded to some of the... Uh, the misinformation of the, or, or uh, abuse is a strong word of the model because what happened was when Dr. Patrick created this he didn't create the model he wrote four academic essays one on reaction two on learning three on behavior and four on results and a lot of people then saw this is great and but they took that information cobbled something together which and implemented in a way that Kirkpatrick had not uh, did not foresee nor uh, wanted people to apply it in that way. He, he had a, a, an other, other expectations. So they have tried to correct some of those um, abuses. What I've done is I've taken the new, new world compatible model and I've mapped it loosely to Paddy plus M just to make it easier for, uh, for us all to see how they're, how they're linked. Now I will say this, when we do, when we, what we've done as part of the course, we follow the Addy model and where evaluation uh, ends, at the, uh, ends up at the very end. However, during the design stage, we should already then have thought about the formative and summative assessments that we're going to provide. However, it's a bit unfortunate that ADI has a value at the end, ADI is not the only model, because unfortunately, a lot of people then forget about the evaluation stage until the very end, it's too late, essentially, to do something good. So what Kirkpatrick, the New World Kirkpatrick model, says think about, and actually what Kirkpatrick said through decades, is think about the evaluation stage already when you're planning your training intervention. So you're talking to the business. What is it you're trying to achieve? What are the outcomes? Where is the return on investment, return on value? What are the expected results? What behaviors do you want your employees to have as a result of this training intervention to support the business? And then you can then figure out what kind of a training intervention you need or the, the course structure and content. Uh, so what I'm saying here is we're going to use this as a planning tool. So planning a training intervention using the New World Kirkpatrick model. In other words, I'm not talking primarily about the end stage, in other words, the, the, the summative evaluation. I'm talking about using it as a planning tool. So we have Kirkpatrick's five levels. Five value, four results, three behavior, two learning, and one reaction. 
So number five value, we have quantify expected financial gains. In other words, what is what are the, the what is the financial gain, the return on investment, return on value that you, dear business customer, want to get as a result of this training intervention? It can be increased sales, for example, if we are training salespeople, uh, increase or market share, which will translate to increased sales or, over time. This maps to the Paddy Percent model plan, which is the business case where we have the cost versus benefit analysis. Okay. Then we have four results, practical level four results, quantify expect results. So we're looking for financial results, but we're also looking for uh, certain outcomes. And that uh, it, it translates to analyze stage of Paddy Pesam with the instructional aim, the aim of the course. And then level three, compact level three behavior, we are looking at defining behaviors to exhibit expected results. In other words, what behaviors do we want our employees to have as a result of the training intervention to provide the business benefits? That matches or maps to Paddy plus M design, planned learning outcomes. So remember, the planned learning outcomes are as a result of the training needs analysis performed during the analyze stage to figure out the instructional goals, the aim and the increase in knowledge, the improvement in skills and the enhancement in the attitude. Level two then, learning, is knowledge and information required to exhibit behaviours. So in other words, for us to have this behavioural change on the job to provide the relevant business results, what knowledge and skills do we need to be able to have these new behaviours? Well, analyse, we have the knowledge, skills uh, the uh, and attitudes that we've we've already have that we've figured out as part of training needs analysis. We also have the design instructional strategies that we want to use to make sure that we're able to provide the teachable moments, to provide the relevant knowledge, skills, and attitude to make sure we have a change in behaviour when on the job to support the business. Okay, and then. Level one, compact level one reaction, determines the instructional and testing strategies in which the training should be delivered. Again, mapped loosely to design, knowledge, skills, attitude, and we're looking at testing strategies. So this is provided for you for something uh, to think about when you're on the job, okay? Not as part of the assignments or this course, but for your future. The next slide is also for future, for on the job. So this is called a program impact rating tool. This is a fancy name for essentially a table. What happens though is what we're trying to do is we want to make sure that our training interventions are linked to viable programs. And what do I mean by viable programs? I mean programs that are of strategic importance to business so that they have a higher chance or greater chance of being successful. And what we do is we have our programs here on the left and I apologize um, most humbly to Liz for using, um, <laughs> uh, <coughs> using acronyms. Uh, so that's train the trainer delivery and evaluation. That's train the trainer, needs identification and design. That's the leadership development program. That's Word Fundamentals, so Microsoft Word. And that is the Arctic Mentoring Program. Then we have the two green here. They're strategic and the four blue are tactical. So the two strategic ones is potential strategic impact. In other words, is this of strategic importance to the business? strategic importance to the business, sorry, but also do we have an executive sponsor, someone with a clout who has a vested interest in seeing that this training intervention or program has a positive end or positive result. Then we have the four tacticals, so do we have management support? In other words, we have an executive sponsor who could be a general manager or senior vice president. Managerial support could be um, area vice presidents or directors and so on. But also, the other one is data availability level four. Notice, do we have the relevant business metrics to perform a Kirkpatrick level five return on investment, return on value analysis, and also Kirkpatrick level four results analysis? That's important. Because otherwise, we can only do levels one and two and potentially three. Also, do we have access to training graduates? In other words, can we talk to the, the employees or the learners who are attending the training or will attend the training? And then is a realistic scope. And then we at the end we have a comment. So it's a very simple way of, of for us to figure out is this training intervention that we are being asked to provide of strategic importance to the business. In other words, are we going to give them the right resources in terms of people, money, time, and so on? So for example, we have for the trainer trainer 
uh, it is of potential strategic impact and we have an executive sponsor. So that's the same for both trainer trainer courses, same for the leadership development program. However, Word Fundamentals doesn't. Why? Well, we're expected to have a basic knowledge of Word, of using um, markers of Word. Does that have us increasing our skills in Word? Will that have a strategic impact on the business? Most of the time, the answer would probably be no. Unless we are technical writers, and technical writing is a service or a consultancy service that we provide to another customer, that it may be of strategic impact, but most of the time, no. Which means that not a lot of money is going to be invested in, in this course, okay? And then we look at the, so I'm gonna wait for the Arctic Mentoring Program to the end. So basically, the other ones, do we have management support? Yes. Data availability, okay, so here we have a challenge. For the train the trainer course, if we don't have any uh, ROI and we don't have any access to training graduates, that may be a challenge. Uh, simply because I can't provide an ROI if I haven't got the business data. And if I can't talk to the, <coughs> the, the learners, I can't gauge uh, how, what the real problems may be and get their feedback and input on how, how good, uh, how important this, this course is. Realistic scope, yes. But again, the, my comment is, how can I prove value? I can't. The Leadership Development Program has, is of strategic importance, has an executive sponsor, all managers supported. We do have relevant business data in, our, in Salesforce. We have access to all the trainers, but the scope is not realistic. In other words, the scope is too broad. The, we, there's too uh, much content that we are expected to cover in the time frame that we're given. So we need to revise that. Word fundamentals, again, not of strategic importance, not we don't have an executive sponsor, we do have a managerial support because it's good for us to be able to know how to write essays and documents, design documents and the like. There's no um, data availability level 4, however, it's not really important in, in, to provide a business metric or a business improvement metric or impact on the, the, the word fundamentals. Now, <clears throat> we do have access to the trainer or to the, the learners and there's a realistic scope. So essentially here, it would be enough for us only to provide a summative assessment at level one and two. So for Kirkpatrick, that's level one reaction and level two learning. So the feedback form and a test. And that maps then to ADI or PADI plus M, the evaluation stage. It's uh, level one is perception, which is the feedback form. And level two is learning, which is would be the test. Now the Arctic Mentoring Program is interesting one. So we do have it is one of five strategic programs for the company. It has an executive sponsor, the general manager. However, there are a few uh, area vice presidents that are think that this uh, this mentoring program is going to take too much time from uh, their employees. Now, the way to get around that is I would always say the general manager thinks, the general manager feels, the general manager thinks that this is very important to get past some of those objections. There is reliable data, in other words, we can, I can see that as a result of the Arctic Mentoring Program that we have an increase in consultative conversations, in other words, meetings where our solution architects are having conversations with client stakeholders at all levels of organization, but also that it leads to an increase in sales of products and an increase in the sales of services. And then at the end, leads to greater satisfaction with the customers, so our net promoter scores increase as well. Access to the 220 global architects, yes, and the scope is realistic. So this um, looks like a good uh, candidate to get involved in, and it actually turned out to be good. But I just, this is for on the job. This is just a simple tool for you to use to figure out the viability, okay? This is also for on the job. So don't think of this as something you have to understand now or use for the course or use your assignments. That is not the case. This is just for on the job. So Kirkpatrick have provided a Kirkpatrick partners have provided a Kirkpatrick business partnership model. Now I've added level five to it, and I'm going to uh, do a paddy plus and mapping to it as well. But essentially, we start to find out the business needs. So what this does, we're using this model both for planning a training intervention, but also for executing it, only using Kirkpatrick's model. So we don't need to talk about Addy or Paddy or Assure or the CAMP model or any other kind of instructional system design model. We can actually use Kirkpatrick both to plan a training intervention and also to evaluate it. Okay? So look at business needs. 
level one, so prepared level five value, define financial metric for success. Return on investment, return on value. What is it the business is trying to achieve financially and to get financial gain? That maps then to prepare package level four results. Refine expectation to define results. What are the results we're looking for? Um, so obviously uh, increase in sales and we want to make sure that we get an increased market share and ideally over time imp uh, improve net promoter scores. Now level three then behavior, compact level three behavior, target critical behaviors and required drivers. In other words, that's how we're doing this for the sales team. What behaviors do the sales team need, the, the, the sales people need to be able to support the expected results? and the financial metrics. In other words, increased sales, um, happier customers through net promoter scores, and also increased market share. How, what behaviors do they need? That then leads us to identifying leading indicators that we need to look for, and that then maps to necessities for success. Out of that then, we design and develop the pre-training. So remember in ADI, in Paddy plus M, during the design stage, there is a pilot test. So once we've created our course content, we can just say, okay, we're running this pilot test to see with a limited number of salespeople whether this, <coughs> excuse me, training intervention is successful. Then we run the training program and, and so on. Oh, sorry, design and develop the training program. We also design and develop the elevation tools at this stage. So we don't wait until the end. We do this during the design stage. This box here is something we do continuously until we're happy with it. So deliver pre-training and the training program. So sorry. We designed and developed pre-training here. This is here, this is where we develop or sorry deliver it. The pilot test, in other words, map to Addy or Paddy level, uh, sorry, uh, to the develop stage. Then we measure one reaction, that's the feedback form. In other words, the learner's assessment of the trainer, the the course, content and the environment. Measure level two, that's a test or assignment of the learners increase in knowledge, skills and attitude and then we have initiate ongoing reinforcement and monitoring that's generally on the job so measure level three behavior in other words have you through the training intervention are you displaying the relevant uh, change in behaviors the improvement in in behaviors for on the job then we measure the level four results in other words are we showing an increase in in sales in, uh, um, better market share and also happier customers and Ideally, then, we always want to see an increase in revenue, you know, shows the money. So we, we can run this a number of times, and then at the end, prepare a chain of evidence to demonstrate return expectations, investment, and value. This is where we do provide the reporting. So in other words, the feedback forms, the knowledge, skill, assignments, of the, the assessment, the tests, the on-the-job behavior, the business um, improvements, and then the financial value. So this is just at a high level how we can use Kirkpatrick's new world model for to plan a training intervention and evaluate it at the same time. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm superimposing the Paddy plus M model onto this because we've worked with the Addy model and I've expanded a bit then with a the plan and maintenance. This is something we can relate to. The business needs <clears throat> and the five financial metrics says we do this during the planning stage. So the business case you know, in terms of the cost benefit analysis, for example. Analyze, we perform the training needs analysis to understand what the, the financial metrics for success are, the expectations, and the critical behaviors required drivers. Now, we also then look at the, for example, the knowledge, skills, and attitude, the level that we want our learners to achieve. And that is then linked to the planned learning outcomes, which we do during the design and identify any necessities for success. During the develop stage then, design and develop, we do the design and develop pre-training, training programs and drivers. So for us, that's where we have the plan learning outcomes, the instructional strategies and the testing strategies, the formative testing and the summative testing, okay? Develop the course and then we deliver the pilot test, uh, the full training program. We measure the success through feedback forms, learners evaluating the trainer, Measure two, learning, the trainer evaluating the learners or an external entity, a QQI examiner in our case. We then provide an in, initial and ongoing enforcement and monitoring. In other words, on the job um, monitoring of the new behavior, which is then measure level three behavior, in other words, through um, feedback forms, peer review, self-reflection, and also a manager's performance appraisal. 
And then we have measure four results, which is have we increased uh, our sales? Are we selling more? Are we reaching more customers? And then finally then also, has this led to an increase in revenue? In other words, are we making more money? Are we selling more? Are we selling larger, bigger deals perhaps? And this is all preparing the reporting then uh, during the evaluate stage and maintenance. So the evaluate is we have, remember from a, an ADI or PADI plus M perspective, evaluate, we have level one reaction, level two learning, and then, sorry, um, it's called perception for ADI, learning two, and we have performance of, of level three. So ADI, level one perception, maps to Kirkpatrick level one reaction. ADI level uh, level two is learning, maps to Kirkpatrick level two. ADI level three performance maps to Kirkpatrick level three behavior. And then the level four results are part level five, which we provide during the maintenance stage. In other words, this is over time the business benefits that we've, we have, and this is the, these are the financial results, the positive financial results that we have. This again is for you to think about for on, when you're on the job, okay? Not for the course, not for, you, for the assignment, for when you're on the job. To summarize then, we've looked at formative versus summative assessments. Formative being a trainer's continuous evaluation of learners during the training intervention in terms of Q&A, quizzes, group discussions and so on. Then we look at oh yeah, the summative assessment. So the summative assessment is at the end of a training intervention. In other words, from a, an ADI or PADI plus M perspective during the evaluate stage, we have the first level which is perception, feedback forms. In other words, the learner's assessment of the trainer, the environment, uh, and uh, the course structure and content. Level two in ADI is uh, learning, which is the assessment of either the trainer's or an examiner's assessment of the learner's um, increase in knowledge, improvement in, sk in skills, and enhancement of attitudes. And then obviously, Kirkpatrick has level four or level four or has level one reaction level two learning level three behavior level four results and level five return on investment now carpack is five levels of education evaluation again if you only from a course perspective stick to level four that's fine but i want you to be mindful of the fact that when you're on the job your business clients and the or the company you work for are going to be very keen to see financial gains as an outcome of your training intervention most of the time okay which is why we're talking about compacted five levels so level one reaction that is the uh, learner's assessment of the trainer the training environment the course content and structure and is usually provided through feedback forms compacted level two is learning that is generally an external external examiner's assessment of how well the training intervention has gone in other words that you have the relevant increase in knowledge improvement in skills enhancement of attitude related to the planned learning outcomes okay and in qqi case we have the three assignments the project brief the skills assessment and the learner record level three then is on the job that's behavior so level chiropractic level three behavior that is as a result of training intervention do you, uh, with the increase in knowledge, improvement in skills, enhancement in attitude, have you changed your behaviours when on the job? And in turn, level four results, has that led to business improvements? And then level five, has that led to financial gain for your company or for your client? Then we looked at mapping Kirkpatrick and Padre M evaluation and maintenance. And again, um, ADI or PADI plus M level uh, evaluate level one is perception that maps to Kirkpatrick level one reaction feedback forms learners evaluation of a trainer training environment course structure and content ADI or PADI level uh, PADI plus M evalu evaluate level two that's learning that maps to Kirkpatrick level two learning which is the uh, examiners or trainers assessment of the learners through a test or examination or assignment. And then uh, ADI or PADI plus M evaluate uh, level three, that's performance. That is on the job summative assessment, okay? In other words, how well are you, are you displaying these new skills? That maps to Kirkpatrick's level three behavior and is generally measured through 360 feedback, 
feedback forms, um, uh, manager's performance appraisal, and very, very importantly, self-reflection. A bit of self-awareness goes a long way, trust me. And then obviously level four results and five return investment, very important to think about. And they map to uh, the Paddy plus M maintenance stage, return investment, return value. And we're going to talk about that in greater detail later on. We also look at the timeline, education evaluation in real life over time. Looking at it from the perspective of a training intervention, where we perform the formative assessment. Then, and that's part of ADDI and PADI plus M. Then we have end of training intervention. That's where Kirkpatrick normally, or came in originally, to do the summative assessment. So we have Kirkpatrick level one reaction, which is again, feedback forms, the learner's assessment of the trainer, the training environment, and the course structure and content. But also uh, the summative assessment level two, which is uh, training or with learning, uh, where the QQI examiner is going to evaluate your increase in knowledge, your improvement in skills, and your enhanced attitude based upon the three assignments, the project brief, the skills demonstration, and the learning record, okay? Uh, but I also look at the way you did, when you did your skills demonstrations, you provided level one, which a uh, reaction, which was a, was a feedback form from your learners, but also level two, you provided a test uh, learning to make sure that you assess the learning of your class. Again, next, on the job, that is generally where you prove that you have the new behavior, the new attitude, based upon your increased knowledge, your improvement in skills, and enhancement of attitudes to do a better job. And that uh, should be measured by peer reviews, 360 degree feedback, feedback forms from the customer, uh, self, uh, self uh, assessments, uh, self reflection, self assessments, and also uh, through manager performance appraisals. And then on the job, as a result of our change of behaviors and improvements, we should see business improvements that the business should be able to see from a results perspective, but also from a return investment, return of value. We had a look at a brief look of a few exercises just uh, related to this particular course and the level at which we are expected to be able to provide an assessment for the course for the assignments. Okay. Now, then we added a few things for on the job, looking at applying the new World Kirkpatrick model as a planning tool. So instead of using ADDI or PADI plus M or Assure or the CAMP model, we're using Kirkpatrick to be able to plan an intervention and then also obviously evaluate. Then we had a look at the, the assessment tool to see whether our training is viable in terms of, from business perspective, do we have the strategic support? In other words, are we going to get the resources, so the time, the people, the money, to be able to make sure we're successful? Then we had a walkthrough of the Kirkpatrick uh, business partnership model, where I just briefly talked you through, for when you're on the job, how to use Kirkpatrick as a planning tool and an evaluation tool, and then I mapped the Paddy plus M model on top of that, just to give you an idea, make it easy for you to follow. Summarize it, and obviously questions and answers are be <laughs> best provided via email. Now there are a few key takeaways. One, for when you're on the job, start your evaluation at the start of the planning and training intervention. So even though ADDI ends with E evaluation and Paddy plus M has E towards the end, think about evaluation already as you're planning your training intervention. Get the business people involved. How do you measure uh, the return on investment? How do you measure return on value? What are the business benefits you're trying to see? And in turn then, what are the changes in behavior that you want to see of your learners? The other thing is this, when you do <coughs> um, assessments, or sorry, when you do feedback forms, stuff like that, and assessments, they should ideally be learner-centric because they provide greater value. So for example, asking people whether the skills that they've acquired, whether they're relevant to the, the job is a good, is learner centric. Um, and that's, that's important. Training interventions also should have a clear link to business benefits. Now, obviously not all training interventions are gonna have a big business impact. So we may well be fine with Kirkpatrick level one reaction, feedback forms, and compatible level two learning, a test or assessment. But ideally, I think you should, as a part of any training intervention, look beyond that to at least on the job. So 
even though you're providing a, a, a training intervention in limited time, thank you, bye bye. You may not see your, your, your learners again. However, do somehow reconnect with them by providing an assessment a few months down the line via email to see how well they were, were able to apply the knowledge that they, and the skills that they received as part of your training intervention. Now, for strategic programs, it's important to show the business value as well. The other thing then is formative assessment is the continuous assessment of, assessment of learners by the trainer to ensure improved or, or increased knowledge, improved skills and enhanced attitudes for the teachable moments. A summative assessment concentrate on the outcome of training intervention and prim are primarily provided at the end of a training intervention. Okay, so those are the key takeaways. Now, these are just three things I want to leave you with. So effective training provides relevant knowledge and skills as well as the attitude, so confidence and comfort, to apply the, the knowledge and skills on the job. Okay? Training effectiveness contributes to positive business outcomes as a result of improved job performance and is measured through evaluation. Third one, training value occurs when training interventions increase performance and have a positive impact on results and can only occur when the trainer is an active member of the business conversations as opposed to being a passive order taker. What do I mean by that? Traditionally, many training and education departments have just sat there waiting for the business to say, I need a course in Word, I need a course in leadership development, I need a course in, in product sales, I need a course in product knowledge. However, we provide the best value when we are working closely together with a business and can actually say to them, okay, you know what, I've noticed that uh, we're having a challenge with regards to product sales. So do you mind if I do a training needs analysis to understand what the potential uh, issues are? We may come up that it's a uh, lack of product knowledge. We may come up with the fact that it's actually one of our competitors has just released a new version of their product and we need to understand how best to, to mitigate that. So the, that's what I mean by, by, by being uh, or working closely, you know, being a part of the business conversations. And then, as a result, now, a lot, so I want to say this, understanding Kirkpatrick's model for education evaluation is key to understanding any education evaluation model. Why? Because it is the basis for most, if not all, other education and evaluation models. So if we understand Kirkpatrick, we can easily understand any other model out there, okay? Now, Obviously, Kirkpatrick's model of learning relation originally four levels. Again, remember, Kirkpatrick, Don Kirkpatrick said, I am an academic. I have, I have vast academic experience, but I have little or no experience of the corporate world. Therefore, I am only going to talk to, to level four about uh, return of expectations, in other words, results. However, he did later on recognize that when Phillips entered the fifth level, that, that was a good level to have because it concentrated solely on a subset of level four results, so return on expectations, on the financial aspects that companies look for, in terms of return on investment, return on value. Now, Kaufman's model of learning evaluation is a modification of Kirkpatrick. So, <coughs> what Kaufman does is split Kirkpatrick's level one reaction into input and process. So in other words, very simple model to apply because of the, the understanding we have of Kirkpatrick. Anderson's value of learning model. So that aligns the learning function with the organization's strategic priori priorities. Again, thinking of level five, return on investment, return on value, and the business benefits. Now, Brinkerhoff success case method, that's an interesting one. As a general rule, when we evaluate, we tend to look at averages. However, what Brinkerhoff says is, it is better to look at the least successful and most successful of training interventions. So in other words, the feedback forms and the tests to gauge an idea of where did we go wrong and how can we do, what can we do to, to alleviate that, but also what worked really, really well and how can we, we apply that in future. Now, it is up to you for on the job to have a look at these different models and decide for yourself which ones you want to use and why. And I will leave you with this. So, please sign up to this website, Kirkpatrick Partners. You can join for free and you get free access to all the good resources. Now, they may want to try to sell you uh, books and training materials and courses and so on. However, I found them to be quite relaxed in that regard. What they make money of 
uh, or from is the fact that they provide consultancy services. So let's say you're planning a large scale global uh, training intervention and you need professional help to provide education evaluation. You bring them in at the beginning of, you, of when you're planning your training intervention and they will then help you uh, to provide a really, really good education evaluation throughout your training intervention. So before, during and after. And then there's a book. Now, I don't want you to buy this book just yet because I'm speaking to Wendy Kirkpatrick at the moment and trying to get um, her and the Kirkpatrick partners to provide you with this book for free. Now, at the moment she's prepared to do that, but she can't, it's going to cost her more to send the books from the States than it does actually <laughs> the price of the books. So we're trying to find other ways in providing this. But I will, I will hopefully get this sorted in the next week or so, okay? Again, any comments, thoughts, suggestions, or questions, just drop me an email. So with that, thank you, and bye-bye.